The latest test positivity rate in California is at 2%. That's a big drop from the 26% positivity rate at the height of the Omicron surge. As we remember, that happened back in January. We're live with UCSF infectious disease specialist, Dr. Monica Gandhi. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Gandhi. Thank you. Now, we obviously know a lot more about the virus than two years ago. We've had breakthroughs with vaccines, therapies. What's your assessment of where we are at now? And what are still some challenges that we are having two years in? So, you know, I think that the president's COVID-19 pandemic preparedness plan that he announced at the State of the Union and really was talked about the next day by the White House Task Force is an incredibly excellent plan. And I really liked it. And we had four components. And the first one was vaccines, just like you said. We've had breakthroughs. We may need boosters. We may need a whole virus vaccine. We need to always think about vaccines. Second is therapeutics. We absolutely have them now, including oral antivirals that the test and treat program that he proposed means that you can go to a pharmacy and the pharmacy can give that oral antiviral called Paxlovid if you're immunocompromised or unvaccinated. The third was getting back to more normal life, but always doing surveillance. And that surveillance is wastewater surveillance so that we always know if something's coming around the corner. And then the fourth is vaccinating the world. So I think that really encapsulated to me the progress that we've made. Everyone needs this progress, but the United States certainly is lucky enough to have all of those tools. And Dr. Gandhi, there's a lot of questions about long COVID symptoms. Uh, recent studies show even mild cases have an impact on the brain. So what are we still learning about the long-term risks of COVID? So that was an important study in a way to clear up for me because um, there has not been evidence that COVID in fact is what's called neurotropic or infects brain cells. And so specifically that particular study you're referring to looked at brain scans before and after COVID. And it was only some loss of brain matter in the, what's called the olfactory center where we smell. And so the theory is that we lose our sense of smell with COVID-19, um, and that's actually because of interactions here with the smell cells. And then during that period of time that you can't smell, anosmia it's called, that you have less signal going to your brain. And so there was reduction in the brain there at the smell center. I think it's really important to say we haven't seen any studies that mean your whole brain goes down or anything like that. But we do still have, um, you know, important questions about long COVID, but vaccination seems to solve a lot of those problems. That's what the Israeli biggest study that looked at this showed us, that people who got mild breakthroughs after vaccination had the same degree of long COVID symptoms as someone who had never had long COVID at all, because that's what an adaptive immune response does to kill that virus, bring down that viral load and prevent it from going places. Dr. Gandhi, speaking of vaccines, any update on the vaccine availability for the younger children? So, you know, this was a disappointing question, obviously, yeah. for what happened. I will say that um, it only worked essentially the Pfizer three microgram dose for six months to two year olds uh, in terms of creating the right antibody response. So. If I were the FDA, I would have approved it for that age group so that we could have that. And then from two to four, there's another vaccine candidate called Covaxin, which is a whole virus vaccine. It's very traditional. It's the whole virus then inactivated with an adjuvant. We've seen these kind of vaccines forever. And they could have approved that from two to four. So I actually wrote the FDA commissioner to ask if they would consider that so that we could get vaccines all the way from six months to four years old. And we already have the five-year-old. So hopefully, maybe by the summer you're thinking? Well, no one's going to listen to me on what I just said, so probably what they're going to instead do is um, they're looking at the third dose of a three microgram dose for the Pfizer vaccine uh -huh. for the older children, two to four. And yes, now they're saying hopefully they'll have the results by May. By May. All right. I don't know. A lot of parents are looking forward to that. <laughs> Dr. Gandhi, thank you so much, as always.